Over the years, the Six Flags chain has added some great additions to their parks. We've seen new rides and roller coasters that were reliable and extremely popular with park guests. For each new attraction that Six Flags Corporate decides to build at one of their 15 parks, the plan is obviously for it to be reliable and popular. But what happens when things don't go as planned? Well then you have rides like a Vekoma Giant Boomerang, water slides that never get a line and are hardly ever open, or rides that only last a season or two at the park. So here are the worst ride decisions for all 15 parks within the Six Flags chain. My name is Brandon, and welcome to my channel, Theme Park Predictions. If you're not a current subscriber and want me to give you a shout out in one of my upcoming videos, then be sure to click that subscribe button and leave a comment saying new sub. If you're already a current sub, then I'll still give you a shout out in a future video. So here's how I created this list. I included water slides on the list, but only if the water park in which the slide is located is included with park emission. There are some attractions on this list that could be the worst ride decisions for multiple parks, but I'm only going to be using the ride once to keep this list fresh. Now I know you won't agree with all these choices, and that's the beautiful thing about a list like this. So be sure to share your picks in the comments so I can read them. Starting off the list. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Over Texas would be Harley Quinn Spin Sanity and ABC Rides Turbulent. Back in 2018, Six Flags added two of these triple axis rotating throw rides to Over Texas and Great Adventure, and both have been filled with problems since their opening. And if you just watch the ride, it looks like a mechanical nightmare. This thrill ride can only hold 24 riders at a time. So for capacity reasons, what was Six Flags thinking? I predict that these rides will be removed sometime this decade. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Fiesta Texas would be Bahama Blaster Pro Slide Body Slides. You would have thought that adding a new water slide to Whitewater Bay would have been a smart move, especially since we're talking about Texas here. But this four drop capsule Pro Slide attraction has been the opposite of a success story. But is it the ride's fault? because these types of slides are some of the most popular attractions at other water parks. Well, during my visit to Whitewater Bay, I felt like the park made Bahama Blaster very difficult to find. And I've heard from many others that the location is this attraction's main problem, because this slide, when open, doesn't even get that much of a line. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Mexico would be Wonder Woman, an SNS free spin. Wait, Brandon, what? Hear me out. Six Flags Mexico gets over 2.7 million annual visitors. That is a ton of people. And just like the company adding these rides to their other larger parks, I personally don't understand it. And the main reason why is because I think these rides should be built at the smaller tier parks. Plus the fact that Six Flags Mexico is one of the most profitable parks in the chain, you would have thought that the corporate would have added a bigger scale coaster here instead. How about a launch coaster, since the park has never had one in its lineup? But on the bright side, Mexico's free spin looks absolutely incredible. The worst ride decision for the Great Escape would be Wiggles World, the kids area. In 2007, I had the privilege to help open the Six Flags New England's Wiggles World, and I know that the one at the Great Escape wasn't nearly as good. So this color, ugly area, only lasted three years. Then it was rethemed to Kidsopolis in 2012. And then in 2018, the Great Escape closed the area for good. Not the best of decisions for the park. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Darien Lake would be Nightmare at Phantom Cave, Indoor Coaster. Nightmare at Phantom Cave opened in 1996 and was closed in 1998. This indoor coaster was indeed added and removed during the premiere days when it wasn't an official Six Flags park. But only keeping a coaster for three seasons is never a positive sign, especially an indoor one. And my other worst ride decision for Darien Lake would be not converting Predator into a hybrid coaster sooner. I know that GCI has plans to install their Titan track on Predator, but just imagine if Darien Lake would have RMC'd Predator for the 2019 or 2020 season. The worst ride decision for Frontier City would be Eruption, an SNS Sky Sling. SNS does a lot of things right, but every once in a while, they create an attraction that would become a major headache in the industry. And that is what happened with Frontier City's Eruption. These type of rides also opened at a few other parks, but they all had issues. I am actually surprised that Eruption at Frontier City lasted as long as it did. The worst ride decision for Laron would be, I would have to say Viper or Viper the Intamin Zaxpin. But how about all the parks walkthrough or interactive attractions that have never lasted more than a few seasons? Though I do think it's super cool that this park offers a haunted house that's open every month that the park is open. The worst ride decision for Six Flags America would be, Two Face, the flip side, Vekoma and Vertigo. It's amazing that you can find a Vekoma boomerang almost at every park in the world it seems. 
but the company was only able to build four Invertigo models. And while Two-Face, the flip side, was an awesome name, this coaster opened in 1999 and was plagued with maintenance issues and downtime. Then in 2007, the park made the decision for it to be removed. The worst ride decision for Six Flags St. Louis would be Boomerang, which is a Vacoma Boomerang. Why does Six Flags hate this park so much? Let's add a coaster to the park that has been in operation since 1989 and not expected to have any major maintenance issues. And if I remember correctly, when the coaster was at over Texas, it had a lot of maintenance issues as well. Now, from what I hear, Boomerang isn't open very often. Sorry, Six Flags St. Louis fans. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Great America would be Deja Vu, a Vacoma Giant Inverted Boomerang. In 2004, I was actually able to snag a ride on this coaster that was never open. It was right at the park opening, and then it was closed down like 30 minutes after my buddy Big Dave and I rode it. Deja Vu was such an intimidating coaster that could never seem to find a way to stay open. Now Silverwood has this thing running better than ever. It makes you really wonder, how could this small little park in Idaho get this massive machine to operate better than Six Flags Great America could? The worst ride decision for Six Flags Great Adventure would be Cyborg Cyberspin, Shockwave, Viper, Ultra Twister, Joker, I could go on. But for me, you have to look at El Diablo, the Larson Loop which operated from 2015 through 2018. Yes, only four seasons. But hey, at least Laron was able to get a new attraction out of it. But the reason why I picked El Diablo over the others is the fact that the chain has these rides everywhere. So why couldn't they get the one at Great Adventure to operate consistently? The worst ride decision for Six Flags New England would be Goliath, a Vacoma Giant Inverted Boomerang. I was so close to saying Thomastown since this area seemed out of place since the park first announced it and obviously it didn't last very long. When the park added the new premier trains to Goliath, that was likely the main reason why this coaster is hardly ever open. And even when it's open, there's a very good chance the ride will break down while you're waiting in line for it. I can't see Goliath being at this park for too much longer. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Over Georgia would be Thomastown. This kid's area opened in 2008, and the train ride was closed for good before the 2012 season. Now there's obviously a few other notable rides that I could have picked here, but this park's Thomastown just seems so out of place even when it was open and only lasting four seasons on the same plot of land as the park's Deja Vu coaster once stood. I am just glad Over Georgia now has a great new thrill ride on this plot of land, finally. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Discovery Kingdom would be Zonga, their foreign version coaster, and also Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster, which is a Skyline Attraction's vertical skywarp. Zonga was relocated to the park in 2003, and then was closed forever at the end of the 2004 season. Talk about a healthy relationship. Then in 2018, Discovery Kingdom debuted their new Harley Quinn coaster that might not actually be a coaster. And the funny thing is, is that this ride seems to be having some major issues as well as downtime. So I don't see this ride lasting that much longer at this landlocked park. The worst ride decision for Six Flags Magic Mountain would be Flashback, which is an Intamin Space Diver, and Green Lantern First Flight, an Intamin Zaxpin. Flashback first opened at Great America in 1985 as Z-Force, then it moved to Six Flags Over Georgia until 1991. This one-of-a-kind and only one built, thank you lord, opened at Magic Mountain in 1992 and operated until 2003. Flashback was filled with tons of maintenance, headbanging, and noise issues and was hardly ever open. Then in 2011, Magic Mountain awarded its guests with the best coaster the park has ever installed, the Green Lantern First Flight. Apparently, this ride was one of the worst coasters in the world. So those are my picks for the worst ride decisions for each Six Flags park. Any rides that I did not mention that you'd like to add to my list? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please stay positive, stay safe, and keep riding coasters.